The newest trailer for Disney Plus's television series WandaVision has recently dropped, and there is a lot going on in it. A lot of fast cuts, a lot of hidden characters and props to analyze and pick apart as we try to figure out what it all means. Welcome back, Nerd Squad. WandaVision is a series that centers around Wanda Maximoff, aka the superhero and Avenger known as Scarlet Witch, and her romantic partner, Vision, an artificial intelligence given life by the Mind Stone, who we saw die during the events of Infinity War, killed by Wanda herself, and then brought back to life using the time stone only to be killed again by Thanos and who is also an Avenger. The television series seems to have a name that fittingly refers to what exactly it will be about on multiple levels. For one, it appears as though it is a reference to television, and various different sitcoms and TV shows which, number two, have possibly inspired Wanda to create her own vision of reality, using her reality warping powers. And of course, the name also refers to the lead characters of both Wanda, played by Elizabeth Olsen, and Vision, who is played by Paul Bettany. Today we're going to be taking a look at the newest trailer for the series series as we count down the top 10 WandaVision easter eggs. If you love all things Marvel, check out our exclusively Marvel playlist by clicking on over here, filled with our most marveliest of videos. And be sure to stick around to the end of this list where I will have some bonus content coming your way in the form of comment responses. Alright now, let's get counting. It's my own version of chaos magic. Now we count. Number 10. Bewitched. The more we dive into the classic 1950s to 60s vibe for at least part of the show, the more we get constant parallels to the American television sitcom that ran from the mid 60s to early 70s, Bewitched. This classic show also started out in black and white and followed Samantha Montgomery, a witch who met, fell in love with, and married a mortal named Darren Stevens. The show follows their crazy adventures as Samantha struggles to fit into the mortal world and to live the life of an everyday normal housewife. Also, if you're like, what about I Love Lucy, Amanda? We're getting to that. Number nine, Agatha Harkness. You may have noticed at the beginning of the trailer, if you were watching with subtitles on, side note, this is another reason that I love subtitles, that the nosy neighbor character of Wanda and Vision, played by Katherine Hahn, is named Agnes. Many fans think this name could be a covert name for the famous witch from Marvel Comics, Agatha Harkness. Not only does her name seem to be similar to Agatha, but we also see Agnes dressed up as a witch for Halloween in the trailer. Very interesting. Comic fans of Wanda Maximoff will like note that Agatha Harkness is known for not only being a powerful witch, but also for being a teacher to Wanda when it comes to mastering her hex magic. Number 8. Maison du Mépris You may or may not have noticed a very focused shot on a wine bottle in the trailer. Wanda appears to be using her magics to make itself pour, giving us a clear look at the label on its front. It reads Maison du Mépris, which translates from French to English as the House of Misery. This is not only telling for Wanda's and Vision's story to come, but could also be a reference to the famously tragic House of M story. Maison du Prix, House of Misery, House of M. Just saying. Number 7, Mr. and Mrs. Hart. Adding a nod to I Love Lucy, another famous retro American sitcom featuring Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz, who were married in real life for 20 years and had a very rocky marriage, Mr. and Mrs. Hart are characters we see Wanda and Vision having dinner with in the show. And while some believe they could be Wanda's subconscious trying to break through this fantasy world and get Wanda to face reality, it also appears that Fred Malhamad and Deborah Jo Rupa's characters of Mr. And Mrs. Hart are a reference to a similar relationship that Lucy and Ricky's characters had with their neighbors, Fred and Ethel, in I Love Lucy. Number six, the twins. In the trailer, we also spot a shot of Vision and Wanda carrying two babies, each with one in their arms. It appears the show may be featuring Wanda's magically created, yet fake, babies, who are later confusingly reincarnated in the Marvel Universe and are acknowledged as being Wanda's children, while also still having their own different birth parents and families. The twins in the comics which Wanda created using her willpower and reality warping powers are known as Billy and Tommy. Tommy is now known as Thomas Shepard, codenamed Speed. He has white hair and takes after his fake uncle, Pietro Maximov. He's super speedy. Billy, on the other hand, takes after his mother. In the comics, he is now known as Billy Kaplan, aka Wiccan, a magic user with reality warping powers, who recently got married to fellow hero Hulkling. So cute. Both are mutants, despite the fact that Wanda and Pietro had their mutant heritage retconned in the comics. Number five, The Last Avengers. This version of Vision comes to us from The Last Avengers story series. Here, something so traumatic happened one day that Vision basically just gave up on living. He stayed permanently phased 
confused and let his molecules drift far apart, making it near impossible for anyone to track him down. However, the Avengers needed him in one final fight, and so the daughter of Wyatt Wingfoot and She-Hulk, Jesse, and Hank Pym attempted to find him so that he could join them in one final stand. Tommy, Vision's son, however, who now appears in the future to have become Sorcerer Supreme, shows up at the last minute with more exact calculations to help them, having been trying to locate his father ever since he went missing years ago, following the tragic event which seems to have happened at Tommy's wedding. What happened to make Vision completely lose it? It seems that Quicksilver killed Scarlet Witch. Vision's other son, Billy, also ends up becoming the villain Grim Reaper in this reality and joining forces with Kang the Conqueror. Now in case you're wondering, yeah, in this reality, Tommy is the one who inherits his mother's mystical powers, and if you're thinking, oh man, I just got the names mixed up. I didn't. It's weird in this reality, and they're kind of swapped. Tommy's magical, Billy's a villain, it's weird. But that's why it's an alternate reality. Anything can happen there. Number four, anti-vision, which is basically just another name for evil vision, right? Anytime an anti-version of someone shows up, especially in this case where they are a hero usually, you should be wary of them. And yes, such was the case with this alternate version of Vision. This Vision from an alternate reality was allied with an alternate evil version of Dane Whitman, who was actually from a different reality and was known as Proctor. For those not familiar with Dane Whitman in the main continuity, he is known as the hero Black Knight. Anti-Vision was in league with Proctor, working to help him eliminate all versions of Cersei across timelines and alternate realities. Not Cersei like Game of Thrones Cersei. In the Marvel Universe, Cersei is actually a hero and member of the Eternals. Usually if you are involved in an assassination plot, by the way, especially of someone who is typically allied with a group of heroes, you're considered evil. Yeah. Number three, Ultra Vision. This alternate version of Vision can be found in the What If series from the 90s in issue 19. Here we see what would happen if Vision ended up conquering the world. In the first story that we're offered that takes a look at this, we see actually how much better the world could be under his rule. Vision rids the globe of hunger and war and leads the Avengers in a successful battle to prevent an alien invasion. However, the B side that we are offered is a lot more dark. This alternate version of Vision is known as Ultra Vision. Actually, I think both versions are known as Ultra Vision, but the second one inspires a lot more of a hostile reaction from the world when he appears on all the world's screens and in all the computers. In an attempt to destroy the Vision, the rulers of Genosha attempt to destroy New York, where Vision's mainframe resides in the Avengers' mansion. Millions die in this attack, including almost all of the superhero community, and oddly enough, the mission actually fails to defeat Vision, who is already residing deep in the world's computers. So he still lives after it. So they basically killed a bunch of people for no reason. Number two, Robert Mitchell. This alternate version of Vision comes to us from the alternate universe of Earth 1610, the ultimate universe. There are actually a few different versions of Vision in that alternate universe, but for the purpose of our list, we're actually gonna be talking about this version of Vision, Robert Mitchell. Robert Mitchell was apprehended by S.H.I.E.L.D. after they found him making powerful bombs. Nick Fury, thinking he could be of use, decided to put him on his West Coast Ultimates team, and Robert was mutated mutated so that he would get powers. His hero codename would become Vision. However, the West Coast Ultimates proved to be too dangerous a team, and so they ended up being pulled from the field and put in stasis tubes. Later on, Vision was used by a California spokesperson trying to get California to basically break away from the USA and sort of become its own nation. His plan was to have Vision reprogram a satellite to fall on California, making it look as though Captain America and the United States government had attacked the state. Number one, Marvel Zombies. Vision's story in the Marvel Zombies universe appears to be a bit conflicting, depending on what you've read. We know he was at the Avengers Mansion when Ashley Williams first shows up, and later on he appears to either have been zombified, reprogrammed to assist the zombie horde, or kidnapped and used by the zombie horde for his parts and capabilities as a synthesoid. He also at one point was recruited by Nick Fury as part of the Resistance to fight against the zombie plague in what Fury believed was a full-on apocalypse scenario. Boy, was Nick Fury right. Either way you look at it though, Vision's life inevitably ends up pretty dark here, with the one event where he is being used as a technological tool being one of the most dark scenarios. Plugged in and appearing to be somewhat disassembled, Vision is no longer able to move at that point. It's zombie Scarlet Witch's job to get Vision to do what she wants, using his love for her as motivation. Here, it's not human flesh he craves, but kisses. Just wants those zombie kisses. Poor Vision. Scarlet Witch, give him like at least a little zombie kiss.
kiss. Come on, he's helping you out. I just love how Wanda's like, no, 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 I have a headache. <laughs> Although to be fair, I imagine if you were a zombie and you hadn't eaten in a while, you probably would have a really bad headache. So it's also a legitimate excuse. Number 10, SWORD. In the comics, SWORD stands for Sentient World Observation and Response Department. However, in the MCU, it's been revealed to stand for Sentient Weapon Observation and Response Division. Well, this was speculated to have been the name before episode four was released due to the appearance of that version of the acronym on a TOPS card, the name actually would not appear until episode four in the show. Just thought I would clarify those two names and where they're from as on my sword list where I talked mostly about the comics, many people felt the need to correct me. And I know that the MCU has a different acronym, so just so y'all know. But the question is more why? Why is the acronym different? Especially as upon Monica's return to the division, she seems to imply that it was meant to be a space and astronaut program, even suggesting that SWORD changed the acronym possibly in the MCU from world to weapon. And they never say that in the show, but it seems to be a little implied. As such, I have a theory that this MCU version of SWORD and director Tyler Hayward might actually not be the good guys that they appear to be, and that after Maria Rambo's death, perhaps something more sinister happened in terms of the organization's direction, as they shifted their focus from protecting Earth from space to creating and monitoring weapons. Very interesting. Perhaps even causing them to create the events of WandaVision themselves through monitoring Scarlet Witch to the point that she suffered some kind of a mental break. I mean, I'm just saying, as Monica said in the show, aren't we supposed to be like observing, not creating weapons? And it does look like they were kind of creating a lot of weapons in that warehouse. Number nine, Nora and George. Mr. and Mrs. Hart in episode one already became victims to what appears to be the power of Wanda's influence. When she found herself unable to recollect her and Mrs. story, we saw her likely accidentally take out her frustration on Arthur Hart, causing him to choke and causing his wife, Mrs. Hart, to kind of be stuck in a really creepy loop. In the end, Wanda urged Vision to save their guest and his boss, Arthur, and all was well. But with WandaVision, we seem to also be seeing quite a bit of influence from another comic series featuring Vision and his happy, normal synthesoid family, Tom King's Vision series out of 2016. If the show continues along this path, it definitely won't be good for their neighbors, as in issue one of the series, we learn that two neighbors who paid them a visit, Nora and George, who kind of show some similarities to Mr. and Mrs. Hart in my opinion, ended up being killed by a member of the Vision family, who set their house on fire while they were asleep. Yikes! Sounds like the hearts who we later learn are actually Sharon and Todd Davis from the main reality got lucky in episode one. At least uh, they didn't get set on fire. Number eight. AIM. While the Beekeeper was explained in episode four of WandaVision, I'm still not entirely convinced that AIM won't be appearing at some point in WandaVision. AIM has been hinted at across board in the MCU and also has been quite present in the Marvel games, Marvel Strike Force, as well as Square Enix's new Marvel's Avengers. The radiation suits that the sword agents wear also seem to be oddly reflective of the AIM suits. For those not familiar with AIM, we did a list on that organization a little while ago, which you can check out, but in the comments, just so you know here, AIM actually stands for Advanced Idea Mechanics, which doesn't sound bad, but yeah, they end up being evil. If you know MODOK, MODOK is actually from AIM and was created by them, although he originally was supposed to be about computing, not killing, but here we are. And before we move on to our next point, just a quick little reminder to give this video a thumbs up if you like it when we talk about cool MCU stuff like WandaVision. I know I like it. Number seven, Agatha Harkness. A powerful witch in the comics, many believe that Agnes in the show is in fact none other than Agatha Harkness in disguise. You'll also notice that in episode four of the show, she was never mentioned as being any of the residents of Westview who actually were missing people that had been sucked into the show within the show that is also known as WandaVision. WandaVision in WandaVision. WandaVision. Agatha is also tied to the birth of Wanda's twins and also was responsible for wiping Wanda's memories of them after they were gone. Agatha also did not stop Mephisto from reclaiming the fragments of his soul, which were actually used to create the children. So yeah, sounds pretty bad if she's here. Gonna be pretty evil. Number six, Mephisto. Going off that last point, if Agnes is Agatha and the twins do actually exist and were created by Wanda using magic and stolen soul fragments, it's very well likely that this means 
means we could be seeing Mephisto introduced either later in the show or as a result of it. Mephisto is, after all, where those soul fragments originated. For those who are unfamiliar, Mephisto is a powerful demon who is often thought of as Marvel's version of the devil. Although with Damon Hellstrom existing, it's kind of implied that Damon's father, not Mephisto, is actually Satan himself. So like the devil devil. All in all, I think just there are lots of demons who claim to be the one and only devil. But in Marvel, in fact, there are multiple demons who rule various dimensions belonging to hell. So there is no real, like, devil. Just a lot of demons. Number five, zombie vision. Near the end of episode two and during episode three, we got a bit of a peek at what could really be going on with Vision, and it appears that Wanda could potentially be reanimating Vision's dead corpse and projecting memories and illusions onto him in order to make him appear and act like he was still alive. Does Wanda know that she's doing this though, or is someone else potentially doing it? Based on what we know of Wanda's character from both the comics and the MCU, it's likely that this is actually Wanda's doing, but that she was simply trying to initially bring Vision back, and you know, based on her unstable powers or chaos magic, something went dramatically wrong, as it usually does when she tries to do crazy magic things. Number four, House of M. A lot of people have theories that this is where we are headed when it comes to the plot of WandaVision that this entire reality is all a fabrication of Wanda's because she had a psychotic break and refused to accept reality. While I definitely think there is inspiration from House of M that the show is taking from, I sincerely hope it isn't quite as cut and dry as all that, and that there is more going on. While fans also have theories about how WandaVision will end, many of us, myself included, believe that instead of Wanda getting rid of mutants, she will bring them into the world. I only hope that Scarlet Witch and potentially Quick Silver, if he returns, will get to be included in what is later classified as mutants once more. Give me my Maximov mutants, please. Give them to me. And if they come back into the MCU, then maybe they could come back in the comics. <sighs> Number three, no mutants. Well, those theorizing about House of M are thinking it could be reversed in the end to introduce the mutants instead of depriving us of them like it went down in the comics. What if this doesn't happen? What if instead we don't see any mutants at all? And this simply isn't a part of the story that comes about in any way. So like, no, no more moment appears at all. Then what? Some are theorizing that for mutants to be introduced, we might actually need more time for them to be integrated. So we might not see them in WandaVision or even see them at all in the MCU within like the next five years of development. Is this a more scary possibility? You bet, because I want my MC mutants right now. But I also respect that when you're making movies and all of that stuff takes a lot of time. And also, you know, there's like a global pandemic, so yeah. Number two, The Visions. Tom King's 2016 Vision series is definitely one that also seems to have influenced the show. There are elements of horror and themes of uselessness here that we see reflected in it. And don't misunderstand me there. I'm, I'm not saying the show is useless. I'm saying that there is a theme running through it of uselessness or frivolity, similar to the comic series themes, which we see symbolized in objects like the vase that was gifted to Vision by Silver Surfer, a floating vase basically made from a material that's poisonous to flowers, meaning that it's a vase in name alone, similar to the visions as a family. It's kind of a symbol for them. And the visions are also similar to likely the fake family that we see Wanda manipulating reality here to create because you know, it's not real. Number one, Wanda becomes the new villain. In the fourth episode of WandaVision, we get to see a part of the scene that we basically missed between Wanda and Geraldine, AKA Monica Rambeau, when Scarlet Witch uses her power to banish Geraldine from Westview, kicking her out after she discovers that she was an intruder and a sword agent. This allows us to see a different side to Wanda we haven't yet seen in the show. One that seems ruthless and even malicious. It seems Seems Wanda will go to great lengths to protect her new family, and just like we saw with House of M, many believe we'll actually see Wanda play the role of more of a villain if people try to break the reality that she has created around her. Can you really blame her though? Because I feel like I'm kind of on Wanda's side a lot of the time with this stuff. I mean, breaking this new reality would likely mean she'd have to give up her newborn babies and vision. So I feel like, you know, that would suck. So she's not gonna wanna do that. 
What hasn't happened to Scarlet Witch when it comes to awful things? Welcome back, Nerd Squad. When it comes to Scarlet Witch, she has had one of the most tragic character evolutions in all of Marvel, and one of the wildest and most turbulent origin stories, which have also changed quite a lot over the years. Today, we're going to be revisiting some of the most terrible comic book moments from this poor woman's history as we count down the top 10 worst things that have happened to Scarlet Witch. And if you want that part to be sure to let me know in the comments below because there are definitely a lot more horrifying experiences in Wanda's past for us to dredge up if you so wish. For now, here's a top 10 tasting. Number 10, being named Traitor. As awful as this one is, it ranks a little lower on our list because, well, Wanda kind of deserved this one. After the events of House of M, Wanda was seen as one of the biggest mutant traitors around, still being believed at this point to be a mutant. Oddly enough, Scarlet Witch was one of the few prominent mutants in comics who has never been part of the X-Men team, and was really only an Avenger. If you're wondering why that is, a big part of it in the later years has to do with mutants hating her due to the fact that she basically wiped them from existence with her wish of no more mutants, which we now refer to as decimation. Well, that and she was initially too busy serving on her father's villainous team of mutants, the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. Still, although she did earn the title traitor, much of what has happened as a result of House of M happened because of basically how harshly people were treating Wanda. So, although she earned the title traitor, it still feels a little harsh to say that she entirely deserved it. I've always thought of Wanda as more of a misguided villain when she plays that role, as opposed to a true and sincere villain in the comics. Number 9 cast as a villain. To expand on our previous point a bit more, a few of the worst things that have happened to Scarlet Witch usually involve her being cast in some kind of villainous role, despite the fact that she is truly a hero when it all comes down to it. Scarlet Witch only ever wants to do what's best, and usually it's some kind of outward manipulation or force that turns her momentarily evil, or causes her to break down and commit some kind of heinous action. It does make for some pretty interesting stories, but it's pretty awesome awful the number of times and how severely Scarlet Witch has been used in this way by others and when it comes to storytelling. Number 8, Betrayed by Her Fiancé Remember when Wanda was about to marry Doctor Doom and then it was implied that he really only wanted to be with her because he wanted to take her power from her? Granted, it seemed like he also wanted to do so to help her and help the world, but of course it's still Doom, so you can bet that ego and selfishness were a big part of the reasoning behind this plot as well. Scarlet Witch no longer remembered who she was when her reincarnation son and member of the Young Avengers, Wiccan, came to find her. All she knew was that she loved Victor Von Doom and was ready to marry him, despite the fact that he had kind of manipulated her. Her love was real, but the backstory that she believed she belonged to wasn't. Wanda ended up spurned and mistreated by Doom even after the truth came out, and she still tried to help him. And before we move on to this next point, just a quick reminder to give this video a thumbs up if you are enjoying it. It really does help us out, I promise. Number 7, Being Named pretender. What could be worse than being referred to as a traitor? Well, how about when Scarlet Witch was referred to as an imposter? This was the new label she was given after it was revealed that she was not actually a mutant, but had been led to believe that she was one for most of her life. Due to the high evolutionary disguising her and her twin brother as both mutants after experimenting on them, and apparently giving them powers himself. During the Dawn of X relaunch in an issue of X-Men, we actually see stories being told of Scarlet Witch where young mutants are taught to refer to her as a pretender, someone who posed as a mutant but was not one and could not be trusted. Seems a little unfair considering that Wanda herself did not know her true origin until much later in life. She wasn't lying, she had been manipulated into believing she was truly a mutant and Magneto's daughter. Number 6, Death of Her Family Even in the MCU, Wanda has a tragic origin story. In the cinematic universe, she and her brother Pietro were orphaned at a young age after they managed to survive an attack that collapsed their apartment. Their parents were killed in the explosion that decimated their home, but they survived after a second missile landed, but did not explode. However, this experience would go on to haunt them for the rest of their days, with the name on the missile being burned into their memories for years to come. And that name, of course, was Stark, which is why when we first meet the Maximoff twins in Age of Ultron, they are enemies and not allies of the Avengers. Number five, Wonder Man's true motivation. Well, Wonder Man's ex 
explanation for not lending his brain patterns to white vision because he felt as though his own soul had been violated in the process of creating Viz the first time around was, I'm sure, true. When it came down to it, Wonder Man kind of kept himself out of the process to give himself a better shot at Scarlet Witch, who he'd always had a thing for and was madly in love with. Which, it's actually theorized, is why former Vision was so enamored with Scarlet Witch as well. Wonder Man keeping his brain patterns to himself would, of course, make it almost impossible for Vision and Scarlet Witch to ever really reconcile. And eventually, this would also lead to Wanda finding love and happiness with Simon, meaning that Wonder Man would, in essence, get what he always wanted, Scarlet Witch's love and affection. Wonder Man later on would die, and Wanda would actually bring him back in a way similar to what we saw her do with her own version of Vision, vision in the show. Hmm. Number four, arc reactor? Some theorize that in the middle of white vision from the MCU's forehead, where the Mind Stone would normally be, he instead has an arc reactor. It lies just beneath the surface of his synthetic skin, making it kind of hard to see whether the triangular light is actually an arc reactor or not. If it were though, it could be being used to continually power white vision, whereas Wanda's chaos magic taken from the drone was simply the kickstart they needed as to the full power source, similar to what Thor's hammer provided when Vision was initially created in the Age of Ultron. We know that Wanda, after all, has the full potential of her powers unlocked by the Mind Stone, and that the Mind Stone played basically a big part in giving Vision life. This would also make a ton of sense that Wanda's magic is connected to that stone, considering that when she destroyed Vision the first time around, it didn't hurt him. He said that he felt only her. It would also make sense as to why she perhaps can't sense Vision when she visits his corpse at Sword Headquarters, because he no longer has the Mind Stone. They are both connected to the Mind Stone. But if it is an arc reactor supplying the constant power and not Wanda's magic, then what does this mean for their future connection? Also, how did S.W.O.R.D. get Stark's technology? Will we potentially see the Armor Wars story arc find its way into the MCU? Number three, all new, all white Vision. If you were wondering why Vision lost his bright color palette, in the comics, it's explained as happening as a result of his biosynthetic skin being removed. It was basically badly damaged during the dismantling process when it was ripped off of him. And that damage meant that now Vision's colors, like his personality, would be much less vibrant. I like to think of this as in stories when people get like super shocked and then their hair turns white. And I think that can also happen in life too, if you experience a ton of shock. Many people have also seen the change in his coloring as symbolism for what was going on for the character in terms of his personal development. Vision would be without his emotional attachment to the information that he had. His programming wiped clean and kind of left him a blank slate, which Hank did his best to rebuild. While Vision had returned, the change in color indicated that he wasn't the same Vision, and implied that he actually may never be who he was again again as he started fresh and started anew. We're gonna see him become someone different this time around, potentially. Number two, Vision's marriage. White Vision still respected Wanda and their relationship, but he couldn't love her. It wasn't possible due to his lack of emotional response. This caused a great amount of distance to open up between the couple and put a lot of strain on their relationship. Eventually, the two would break up with Vision heartlessly doing so over the phone, asking Wonder Man to kind of pass the message along basically to Wanda while she was in recovery. We see this difficult time in their relationship revisited in Tom King's vision when Scarlet Witch pleads with Vision to explain what has happened to him to their children, and Vision basically responds that they're no longer his children. You can check out this heartbreaking moment in issue 7 of 2016's Vision series, and the brutal breakup moment in issue 63 of Avengers West Coast, the renamed but continuation of the 80s West Coast Avengers series. Avengers West Coast, I feel like, is a uh, a weird name change that they did, but hey, it happened. Number one, Vision Quest. If you really want to get up to speed about exactly how White Vision came to be and was resurrected and created, an important story to touch on in the comics would be the West Coast Avenger arc, Vision Quest. This story took place from issue 42 to 45 of the 1985 West Coast Avengers comic series. And if you've been checking out all the lists, they've probably brought it up before, but yeah, you should go and read it. Seriously, go back, read it, check it out. It follows the journey of Scarlet Witch as she searches for her missing husband and discovers that he was kidnapped and dismantled. We then see Hank Pym and Wonder Man do their best to reconstruct Vision and follow along as a new version of him is reborn. For the beginnings of this chapter in Vision's life, this is one of the best places to start. And then you can kind of go out from there, because... Yeah, there, there is quite a few uh, white vision things that happen after that. 
You wanted to learn even more about Wanda's weird backstory? We got you. And get ready because it is about to get weird indeed. Welcome back, Nerd Squad. While Wanda has had a life of tragedy herself, she's also caused her fair share of tragedy for others. And she has also had to deal with some pretty awkward and awful moments throughout her life. Moments that even can give us a better understanding of perhaps just why she herself has caused some of this tragedy for other people. Let's take a closer look at some of these perplexing moments and get to know Wanda a bit better as we count down the top 10 Scarlet Witch moments that made us say WTF? Let's get to it. Number 10. Mastermind woos the Scarlet Witch. If you go way, way back in the comics, back to the very beginning of X-Men, you'll find out all about the first person to compete for Wanda's heart, way before Vision was even in the picture. We're talking about Mastermind. And of course, Mastermind's attempts to woo Wanda left us wincing at just how painful they were to read about. Jason Wingard would obnoxiously assume that Wanda wanted to be with him and that they would make the best match ever and power couple, but he was quick to anger and would also threaten to defeat Wanda almost every time she denied him. Be like, y'all make you pay for denying me. Oh jeez. She was just none too impressed with his powers, which she dismissed as being kind of lame because they were just illusions. And honestly, not even some of the best illusions out there really. So Wanda, I feel you. Also, Mastermind's just a creepy guy, so it's probably hard for him. Well, it can't be that hard for him to find love. He did have daughters, so... Someone was into it. Number nine, Namor's comparison. With all the classic issues I've read, I really should not be too surprised by this one. <sighs> and yet. At one point, Namor finds himself allied with Wanda and helps her to strike out at the X-Men to get her brother back whom they have kidnapped before Magneto destroys her brother along with the mutant heroes. Namor, however, doesn't seem to just help Wanda out of the kindness of his heart. Namor isn't really big on kindness, to be honest. He's not the kindest person I know. He helps Scarlet Witch because he finds himself attracted to her, even comparing his level of attraction to that of his feelings for Sue Storm in the Fantastic Four. What? Comparing these two women seems pretty absurd because, well, they're both different. They both look very different as well, but also just the fact that he could only have helped Scarlet Witch if he was attracted to her also just seems ridiculous. Like, why couldn't he just help her because he wanted to? Though, I know it was the 60s and I, that's just kind of how it went in comics. Are you a pretty lady hero or a villain or just a character? Well then, everyone's probably attracted to you. Before we move on to this next spot on our list, if you enjoy learning more about Wanda with me, feel free to give this video a thumbs up and maybe we'll even give you some more Wanda lists. I love talking about Scarlet Witch, so I'm down with it. Number eight, almost marrying Doctor Doom. Gasp. This is a moment that had everyone doing double takes and asking, but why? Wanda was believed by Wiccan, her reincarnated son, Billy Kaplan, to be in danger in the castle of Victor Von Doom. But when he went to save her, he learned that she was there of her own choice and she seemingly was head over heels in love with Victor? Huh? What? It turns out that Wanda had some selective memory loss, which may have helped to sway her into accepting Doom's marriage proposal. But even after she got her memories back, she still actually seemed to want to marry Doom. She seemed to be genuinely interested in him. In fact, in a weird turn of events, it was villain Doom who actually ended up spurning her after he attempted to take on her chaos magic, but found her to be too powerful for him to wield. Even knowing that Doom had likely manipulated her for a chance at that power, she still tried to help him, only for him to rebuke her, resort to name calling, so rude Doom, and insist that she was so unskilled that he was somehow in fact behind all of the wrongdoings of her past. He's like, you don't even know what you're doing. You think even you did all the things that were bad? That wasn't you, that was me. What? Number seven, Vision dating Carol Danvers. And if you're wondering what this has to do with Wanda, well, she was right there when this all started. Awkward. Especially considering that Miss Marvel and Scarlet Witch were always painted to me as being close friends in the Avengers. In fact, I think Carol actually might be one of Wanda's BFFs, definitely at least within that Avengers team, within that friend circle. After Vision and Wanda were no longer together, Vision decides to ask Warbird, aka Carol Danvers, out right when Wanda and Carol are in the middle of some playful banter. Hmm. While Wanda says it's all fine, her reaction seems to imply that it really isn't. Like, look at that face. Also, I feel like a date between Vision and Carol would be even more awkward than Carol's date with Spider-Man. And that was pretty awkward. 
It was cute, but it was awkward, so yeah. Number six, M Day. One of the most insane moments in Wanda's history would have to be when she eradicated the Earth of almost all mutants. This happened as a result of Wanda being confronted by her friends, the Avengers, and those who had never really liked her, the mutants of the X-Men. After making a world in which mutants were the dominant group and trying to give most of her friends and the mutants a happy life, this reality came tumbling down. And in the aftermath, everyone still wanted her dead. In fact, people that didn't want her dead before, like Spider-Man, really wanted her dead. Not knowing what else to do, Wanda did the unthinkable and cast a spell with the words, no more mutants, eradicating all of the mutants on planet Earth. Well, now we accept this as part of mutant and comic book history, at the time this was pretty shocking and elevated Wanda's level of powers even more than we thought possible. Number five, punished for a mental break. And if you thought it couldn't get weirder than Wanda getting rid of most of the mutants with them coming after her still, even after she was simply trying to give them what they wanted, ugh, it does get weirder. Let's rewind a bit to talk about another shocking moment in Wanda's history around House of M when her friends and the mutants had a meeting to decide what to do about Wanda what to do. The Scarlet Witch at this point hadn't made the House of M reality yet, but was mentally suffering, and Professor Charles Xavier was no longer capable of containing her unpredictable powers and dangerous mind. So dangerous, so crazy. Most of the talk was about how Wanda needed to be taken out, with a few heroes speaking up against this, and Xavier actually not knowing what to do either way. So helpful, thanks Xavier. It was a hard situation to be sure, but it still blows my mind that these people People who knew that Wanda was at her core a hero considered killing her because she was volatile after going through a lot of stuff. A little more compassion here would have been nice, but hey. I'm still waiting for compassion for Scarlet Witch. I feel like people are always just like a punching bag for everyone. This poor woman. Number four, raised by a cow. It's true. One of the High Evolutionary's first creations happened to be the evolved cow, Bova. Bova Ayrshire would act as the midwife when both Wanda and Pietro were born, and would act as their nursemaid. Bova even gets a seat at the table when Wanda and Vision sit down to a family dinner together. We can see Bova is considered one of the members of the family and is featured there, while Simon Williams, aka Wonder Man, whose brain waves were used in the creation of Vision, gives his toast. So weirdly enough, Wonder Man's like, you're like my brother, Vision. Yeah, yeah, Wanda's family tree is uh, pretty weird and super complicated at this point. What's even more weird is that Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver aren't the only heroes that Bova has helped to raise or to act as a midwife for. Also, if you want to learn more about Scarlet Witch's family, please let us know in the comments because I'd love to do a video just on all that stuff. There's a lot of things there. Number three, her relationship with Quicksilver. I really didn't want to go here, but then I thought, hey, if I don't go there, you'll all be wondering why it was missing when it was just such a gross and confounding moment in the ultimate line of comics. You're gonna be like, how is all of the stuff that you listed here worse than that? So thank you, thank you for making me go here. I didn't wanna go here, but we're gonna go here. In the Ultimate Universe, for those who may not know, we got different versions of a lot of our characters. Some of these were really cool. For example, we might not actually have Samuel Jackson as Nick Fury, if not for the Ultimate Universe, where we actually saw a version of Nick Fury that basically was inspired and based off of the actor himself. In fact, this version of Nick would even cross over to the 616 universe, even after the Ultimate Universe of 1610 was gone. However, for Wanda and Pietro, the changes they saw were weren't nearly as good or cool. In the Ultimate Universe, the siblings' close connection is reimagined as a romantic relationship, one that shocked even Ultimate Wolverine. And you know in any reality, Wolverine would be a hard guy to shock. Number two, her kids. Oh boy, Wanda's kids are a whole series of WTF moments, one right after the other. First, there is the fact that Wanda and Vision couldn't actually have children naturally because Vision was a synthesoid. So how did she get pregnant? By using pieces of Mephisto's soul to conceive. Yep, her children are literal demon spawn. Even Vision knew something was up and he himself actually encouraged his wife, Scarlet Witch, to face the fact that their children were not theirs really and were a lie, which is also pretty shocking. And I mean, it's kind of awful. I mean, you know, he's right, but yeesh, Vision, have some tact. He's just yelling at her and I'm like, ah. 
Wanda was forced to give her children up, and Agatha Harkness, her mentor, ensured that the souls were returned to Mephisto after their destruction, and then wiped Wanda's memory of them. Another yikes. From there, it gets weirder as the fragments of soul somehow got loose again, and then were reborn as Wanda's kids, but in other bodies from separate families. Does that make sense? Number one, no more mutant. If we are talking about one of the most surprising and confusing moments in comic book history for Wanda, it's got to be the moment when it was revealed that she was never actually a mutant. Ah, what? Her or her brother, who were for a time loyal members of Magneto's Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, and were led to believe that they were actually Magneto's children. But apparently, no, none of that was real. It was all a fake out created by the High Evolutionary, <laughs> who disguised them as mutants after experimenting on them. However, the truth started to come out when Wanda, after casting a blood curse spell on her family members, found that Magneto was not actually affected by it, whereas Pietro was. This is definitely a weird revelation, though it creates lots of holes in past comic book history and stories. Like, how was Wanda's power able to be amplified and utilized by mutant powerhouse Hope Summers in order to defeat the Phoenix Force if Wanda's powers themselves weren't at all mutant? This isn't Hope's whole thing that like she can only do that with mutant powers? Number 10, Mainframe. This version of Vision comes to us from the alternate reality of Earth 691. Here, the world faced devastation when Martians invaded. Knowing Earth would be unable to stop them, instead of staying and doing his best to help people, Vision fled, abandoning billions of people who would end up dead in the battle, including most of Earth's superheroes. Vision also appeared to take with him this alternate Earth's Wonder Man, forcibly teleporting him to safety despite the fact that he wanted to stay and fight to the end. How cruel. Vision then merged his mind with the computerized world known as Klaatu and gave up his body, becoming the all-powerful mainframe. Number 9. Red Vision Red Vision comes to us from the Amalgam universe and was an amalgamation of DC's Red Tornado and Marvel's Vision. Similar to Vision's own backstory, Red Vision's backstory was that he was a synthetic man created to infiltrate the heroic Judgment League Avengers, only to later betray them. Although his intended purpose for existing was quite dark, much like his comic book counterparts, he was destined to become a hero. An air elemental took possession of the android body, bonding with it and becoming a hero and a force of good. Number 8. Jonas Jonas just wanted to be a hero, but alas, in the end, it wasn't meant to be. This alternate version of Vision comes to us from 616 and is actually more an alternate version inspired by the original, but not specifically an alternate version of the main Vision from 616. This alternate Vision is his own person and was created by Iron Lad. He is the brainwaves of Iron Lad and is like the combination basically of Iron Lad and Vision. And it was actually after some soul-searching travels that he decided to name himself Jonas, realizing he himself was neither Iron Lad or Vision, but his own person. Jonas was a member of the Young Avengers and was killed during a confrontation with Doctor Doom and Iron Lad, while fellow teammate and his love interest Cassie Lang, aka Stature, has been returned to life after also dying in that battle, Jonas still remains dead. Sad. Is it also dark that, like, no one has brought him back yet? <laughs> And before we move on to this next point, just a quick reminder, if you love learning more about Vision and who doesn't, to give this list a thumbs up. When you like things, it tells us that you want more content like them, so it is really helpful. And it also just helps us out here at the channel, so thank you. Number 7, MCU. Yep, the Marvel Cinematic version of Vision is not much brighter than any of the others out there. In this reality, Vision was created by Ultron, just like in the comics. But instead of Vision being like his son, made to destroy the Avengers, he was meant to be a form for Ultron to actually occupy. Sealing the body of what would become Vision, Tony Stark and Bruce Banner managed to upload what remained of Tony Stark's AI, Jarvis. What was born out of that body and AI was something new. The new being took the name Vision and agreed to help the Avengers in their quest to protect humanity and defeat Ultron. Vision would later be killed by Thanos, and the way he went was pretty dark. After Princess Shuri of Wakanda failed to safely remove the Mind Stone in time, Scarlet Witch, Vision's lover, was forced to kill him in order to prevent Thanos from getting the Infinity Stone that granted Vision life. However, Thanos used the Time Stone, which he had already secured, to rewind time and bring Vision back to life so he could pull the intact Mind Stone from his head, killing him much more painfully and right in front of Wanda Maximoff. 
yikes. Currently, some form of vision appears to exist once more in WandaVision, though it was heavily implied that this was just Vision's corpse, which Wanda perhaps stole and was willing or unwillingly manipulating with her powers to make him seem alive. However, in the latest episode, we found out that's not exactly what happened, but I won't spoil it for you just yet if you haven't seen it. But yeah, even Vision's existence in WandaVision, it's all pretty dark. Number six, White Vision. This version of Vision also comes to us from Earth 616. And while he is still the Vision, it is important to note that the Vision is a character who, within his own history, not even including alternate Earths, has had many versions of himself. Why? Well, because he's a machine who is constantly being destroyed and rebuilt in the comics. Who is the iconic White Vision? Well, White Vision is the version most of us comic book readers see and then think of his time on the West Coast Avengers, which is kind of when this all came about. This version of Vision had basically none of the same memories or emotions as the previous incarnation of himself. He came about after Amortis had kidnapped Vision, took him apart, and then put him back together again, causing a dramatic amount of damage to the synthesoid. Number five, original costume. Yes, I love that we get this Easter egg in here and that we can expect to see it in the series. We get a shot featuring Elizabeth Olsen as Wanda in her original costume. Now, it appears to be a potential Halloween look just based on where she's wearing it and the quality of the costume, which admittedly looks like a pretty high level Halloween costume, but not quite cinematic level. Still, I'm super excited to see her rock this original costume look for Wanda in the series. It's one of my favorite costumes around. I always love a good, strange, and not really functioning headpiece in a costume. Number four, reality warp. Not only do we have that wine bottle to give us a hint that Wanda might be having a psychotic break and creating a fictional alternate reality for everyone to live in, we also get many clear moments where this is implied. From moving through countless decades of fashion and interior design, as well as stylized shots, to a specific moment that we see in the trailer between Vision and Agnes. She seems to be stuck in a trance, which Vision snaps her out of by lightly shocking her. Agnes looks startled to see Vision and asks, am I dead? Vision, puzzled, answers no, why? And she responds, cackling, because you are. We also see a shot of Vision's skin turning from gray to red, suggesting that Wanda has brought him back from the dead, but perhaps not really. We could, after all, be living in a false reality which Wanda's powers have created, but how long will that last? Number three, Vision's cape. Not only does Wanda seem to be rocking a Halloween costume version of her original look, but Vision also gets an amazing and comedic one, complete with his dramatically colored bright yellow cape. This costume made its first appearance alongside of Vision in the original Avengers series, Volume 1, Issue 57, out of 1968. I seriously am in love with all these Halloween vibes, and I hope these aren't the only original Halloween looks that we get to see. Hopefully we'll be treated to a few other comic book supers original looks via Halloween costumes maybe worn by residents in this sleepy town which Wanda and Vision seem to have taken up residence in, or which Wanda has created. Number two, Captain Marvel 2. Near the end of the trailer, we get an amazing surprise. We can see a character flying through the sky through some kind of force field, possibly what houses or protects Wanda's imaginary world, and landing at the feet of government agents. That character is played by Tayona Paris, who has been confirmed as playing grown up Monica Rambo. What does this mean? Likely that WandaVision will have some kind of ties to Captain Marvel's story, potentially weaving into the plot of Captain Marvel 2. Monica Rambeau in the comics was actually the first woman to wear the Captain Marvel mantle, but in the MCU, where she was introduced as Carol's best friend, Maria's daughter, it is likely that we'll see her take up another mantle and potentially work alongside Carol, possibly as Photon, one of her superhero mantles, which was hinted at in the first film. Number one, Sword and Darcy. C. Lewis. The government agents that Monica Rambeau seems to collapse in the ground in front of, many believe they're meant to be the S.W.O.R.D. organization, who will be taking the place of S.H.I.E.L.D. in the MCU. Though in the comics, S.W.O.R.D. are more a branch of S.H.I.E.L.D. which deal with monitoring and responding to intergalactic threats. S.W.O.R.D. stands for Sentient World Observation and Response Department. During this shot, you might have also missed the reappearance of a very familiar and long absent character, Darcy Lewis, played by Kat Dennings in the MCU. MCU. I love Kat Dennings. Darcy was the friend of Jane Foster, one of the world's most brilliant astrophysicists and Thor's love interest. Darcy was Jane's friend, assistant, and her intern, and worked alongside both Jane herself and her professor, Eric Selvig. You can just barely 
may crowd in the background, but hey, she's there. Slow down the trailer at around 1 minute and 6 seconds to see if you can make it out for yourself. It seems Darcy will be joining S.W.O.R.D. or at least working with them, potentially attempting to assess the threat that Wanda's reality warping powers pose to the world. Number 10, Gypsy Witch. Coming to us from Morgan Le Fay's warped reality, this alternate version of Scarlet Witch was one of the only people remaining untouched by Morgan's powers. All the other Avengers involved believe they were actually a part of the Queen's elite guards in what appeared to be medieval England. Because Wanda was aware of what had transpired and still had her memories intact, she was locked away. Oh no! As dark as that is, she would eventually get free and end up saving the day in defeating Morgan Le Fay. So this version and story didn't end up being all dark at least. You can check out this whole fantastical story and the world in the 1998 run of Avengers. Check it out. Number 9. Marvel Noir. Dark in a very literal sense of the word. We have Wanda Magnus from the Marvel Noir world, which is based off of the film noir crime genre. Here Wanda is the daughter of Eric Magnus. Eric is the chief of detectives in the city, but also runs a criminal organization known as the Brotherhood. This version of Wanda is very carefree, maybe too carefree, especially when it comes to her father's position as a crime lord. Wanda also has some deep gambling debt that she simply ignores because of who her dad is, despite the fact that having it puts her life in danger. She's got a classic femme fatale feeling to her in this world. You can check out this dark spin on Wanda and other classic Marvel characters in the X-Men Noir series. In fact, I think there's a whole bunch of Noir series similar to uh, Spider-Man Noir, if you also like, you know, that Noir, which is probably the most famous world of it? Version of it? Number 8, MC2. Wanda had it pretty rough in the MC2 alternate Earth of 982. Here she ends up in a coma after attempting to help her fellow heroes confront a very dark and evil alternate Earth led by Doctor Doom. When this mission fails, Wanda ends up being relied upon to close the portal between the two worlds and ends up comatose as a result. But it gets worse. Even when Scarlet Witch is revived here, it's only to be manipulated and used by Loki. Fortunately, she ends up breaking free of his influence and coming too. But for a while there, it was looking pretty pretty bleak for Wanda and some of the other heroes as well. You can check out this last story where the Avengers face Loki in the Last Hero Standing story and miniseries. Literally, it's just called The Last Hero Standing. Number 7, Marvel Cinematic Universe. While Wanda Maximoff of MCU fame might not seem like an alternate that is dark, scary, or tragic on the surface, all you need to do is peek a tiny bit below that surface level to see what I am talking about. In WandaVision, we are now getting to explore Wanda's feelings and see her kind of try to deal with the fact that she is deeply depressed. So depressed and distraught, in fact, following the events of Endgame that she may have seemingly manipulated reality into giving her her own happily ever after? I say may because we don't know for sure yet if someone might be manipulating Wanda into using her powers this way. There are still a lot of questions to be answered at this point in the show. I believe uh, we're on episode 7 right now at the time that I'm filming this, just for context. Regardless, however, it has been established that she has the ability to warp reality. Add in her tragic backstory with the death of her parents and the death of her brother, her villainous past, her current state of mind, and the fact that she almost single-handedly wiped out Thanos after her return in Endgame, because yeah, that happened, and Elizabeth Olsen's Scarlet Witch is still pretty dark and pretty powerful. Number 6, Age of Apocalypse. Everything is pretty dark in Age of Apocalypse, no? Wanda included. Scarlet Witch in this reality died the same year that she was introduced. Oh shucks. She would then later be resurrected in a sense when the human resistance created a ton of Scarlet Witch clones. The purpose of doing so was to try and use her abilities to depower mutants in a similar way to what 616 Wanda had accomplished following House of M. You see, they found out that in the 616 reality, that's the thing that happened. In the end, AOA Magneto heard about all of this and in a fit of anger, destroyed all the clones, except for one, because you know, I'm sure he misses his daughter. Number 5. Marvel Zombies 
No one escapes the dark touch belonging to the reality of Earth 2149, that of Marvel zombies, and I mean no one. Here, Scarlet Witch ended up zombified by Frank Castle and later allied herself with a zombified kingpin. Dominated by hunger, zombie Scarlet Witch uses her husband Vision's parts to block radio signals of the survivors. She used Vision's undying love for her to make him do what she wanted. Pretty dark. And then she wouldn't even give him a zombie kiss. Poor Vision. More zombie kisses for Vision. Number four, Days of Future Past. In this reality, Wanda ends up being plugged into a machine, basically, and used as an energy source, left completely drained and looking and probably feeling really, really rough. Wanda does end up getting rescued by Wolverine, Jubilee, and Magneto, but kinda dies in the process. I personally think Days of Future Past is one of the darkest alternate realities, period, especially in Scarlet Witch's case. She was like used of all of her energy, and then even when she gets saved, she dies. There's a lot of alternate realities where Wanda just dies and like dies kind of brutally. And friends, before we move on to this next spot, if you are enjoying this video and you want more lists about Scarlet Witch, please let us know by giving this video a thumbs up. Number three, Weapon Hex. Weapon Hex comes to us from Gamora's Infinity Stone created Warp World. Warp World was created when Gamora contained the souls of the universe inside the Soul Stone. <laughs> Folding the world in half and thereby combining souls together to create new beings in an alternate reality made up of combinations of Marvel's famed characters. They got fused. Weapon Hex is a combination of, you guessed it, Laura Kinney's X-23 and Wanda Maximoff's Scarlet Witch. Weapon Hex, get it? Weapon Hex has a tragic backstory wherein she was born to become the host for the eldritch warp world god, Mephikathon. I think I'm saying that right. Mephikathon? Her father attempted to weaponize her and use her in this way, but her mother actually ended up having second thoughts about all of this, leading her father to manipulate Weapon Hex into killing her own mother. What? That's dark. I wonder how many times I've said dark in this list. She have like a dark counter, probably a lot. Number two, Ultimate Scarlet Witch. One of the darkest versions of Scarlet Witch around has to be Ultimate Scarlet Witch from Earth 1610. Why? Well, because this version of Wanda had a much too close relationship with Pietro. In the alternate universe of Earth 1610, Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver were together romantically, despite still being brother and sister. Yeah, they're still brother and sister in that reality, in case you were wondering. They did their best to keep their relationship on the down low, but some still ended up uncovering their secret. The ultimate universe was also at one point in competition to take over as the main continuity, competing with Earth 616. You can thank every Everyone's favorite big green lawyer, Jennifer Walters of Earth 616, for preventing that from happening. Thank you, Jen. In Wanda's case, it would have definitely been pretty awful if that had happened. Number one, Scarlet Warlock. This version of Wanda is a gender bend who happened to be on the side of the baddies at the time, allied and working alongside Magneto and his brotherhood of evil mutants. Scarlet Warlock, as we know him, attempted to work his hex magic to transfer the captured Wolverine of their world's adamantium skeleton to a female Magneto. Because their reality, Magneto's the lady. However, being that even in this reality, Scarlet's magic is highly unpredictable, Scarlet Warlock's spell misfired, instead combining Magneto, Quicksilver, Wolverine, and Mesmero, and himself, all into one being who later becomes known as the great villain, Brother Mutant. Brother Mutant's goal is to kill all non-mutants on Earth. Yeah, pretty evil. You can check out this alternate version of Scarlet Witch in Exiles 85 and 86, where a team of alternate universe versions of Wolverine team up to try and take him down. Also just alternate universe Wolverines, it's always fun. Number 10, Canadian Secret Service? Who's responsible in the comics for giving us this version of Vision? That is a complicated question to answer because it actually was a bunch of people who appeared to be someone that they weren't. The people who kidnapped Vision approached Mockingbird initially for her help and appeared to her to be working for the usual secret organization that we all suspect, S.H.I.E.L.D. After she found out their true plot, however, she was locked up and realized based on the appearance of her cell alone that they were actually KGB. Later on, we discovered that it wasn't KGB, but actually a Canadian spy working for the Canadian Secret Service in league with various other operatives from secret services all over the world. Together, they created a group known as Vigilance, who were formed after Vision had revealed how powerful he was when he took control of the world's computers. Hold on, do we even have a secret service here in Canada? Oh, 
apparently we do. You'd think we'd be one of the least secretive acronyms out there, CSI, but they're actually the CSIS, Canadian Security Intelligence Service. I also just love how secret intelligence operations are still Googleable. Are they really that secret then? Number nine, Immortus. That's right, while Vigilance was responsible for the actual deed of capturing and dismantling Vision, they in turn were being manipulated into doing so by one of the Avengers' biggest bads in comics, Immortus. Immortus is a time-traveling villain who is known by many different names, including Kang the Conqueror, depending on where he is in his own timeline when he shows up. In the comics, it was revealed that the true identity of this villain was none other than the young hero Iron Lad all grown up. Many therefore speculate that White Vision's appearance in the MCU could therefore imply that Immortus or Kang, who we know will appear in the next Ant-Man film, could actually be responsible somehow for manipulating Sword's actions, influencing them from behind the scenes to create White Vision and go after Wanda. It's all part of his master plan. Since in the comics it was Immortus all along for this plot. Not Agatha all along for this one. I know, disappointing, because I like that song. Number eight, dismantled scene in WandaVision. Well, I have speculated a few times in the past about what the true identity or allegiance of director Tyler Hayward is in WandaVision. Is he working for or some other version of Kang? Is he part of AIM? Is he Mephisto? This time around, when it comes to a specific scene, though, in WandaVision, compared to the comics, Hayward actually plays the role of Mockingbird. Huh? Near the end of issue 43 of the West Coast Avengers, you see Mockingbird lead Scarlet Witch to where her husband is being kept, only for it to be revealed that he has been completely and utterly dismantled. Oh no. Better a widow. Actually, a much more gruesome scene in comparison to the version we saw in the show, in my opinion. Here, however, Mockingbird isn't trying to keep Wanda from Vision. She's returned to the Avengers team to try and help them after being led astray by someone who she thought worked for S.H.I.E.L.D., but who was in reality using her as a pawn. So a similar role, really, only in terms of their purpose in that one scene, as Hayward definitely does not seem to want to help Wanda when she bursts into S.W.O.R.D. looking to reclaim Vision's lifeless body after the events of Infinity War and Endgame. Well, I mean, I think he does want to help her. He wants to help her bring Vision back, I think, but he doesn't want to, like, give her Vision's body to bury. He's like, no, no. Two visions, or rather, two attempts. That is to say that when Vision is brought back for the first time in the comics after being dismantled, he doesn't actually come back as the white Vision we saw in WandaVision. The first time Vision is brought back by Hank Pym and Wonder Man, aka Simon Williams, something goes wrong, and he kind of has more of, like, a boiled down Terminator look going on. Like just Terminator skeleton look with like a little bit of flesh. Vision ends up going berserk and actually attacks Wanda when she tries to reach out to him and connect. His emotions are gone and he's kind of a homicidal maniac. Fortunately, Hank and Wonder Man with a little bit of help from Hawkeye managed to get Vision back under control, knocking him unconscious so they could try again. But they also then realized that his personality had basically been wiped clean, which is why he was so defensive when he was brought back to life and reassembled by Hank. So they gotta rework some of that programming a bit. Number six, no emotions. The second time that Hank brought Vision back, he managed to reprogram him with all the information he would need about the Avengers so that he would come back as an ally, a friend, a hero. Much closer to his older self, but something huge was still missing. In the MCU, it's likely that Vision's Mind Stone will be that vital ingredient, but in the comics, it was actually his brain patterns or his brain waves, which were taken from Simon Williams, aka Wonder Man, when he was originally created. Unfortunately, this time around, Simon didn't want to cooperate. He felt that his brain waves, which gave Vision his soul, had been taken without his consent before, and this time he didn't want to give them up, feeling it was kind of like a violation of his own soul. And so the Vision came back without any emotions. Even though Wanda tried to be like, but he's my husband and I love him, please help. Simon was like, yeah, he's like my brother, but no. Number five, having Magneto for a father, at least for the time she did. While in the comics, Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch are no longer considered the children of Magneto, they still had him as a father for many years and across many alternate Earths as well. While Magneto might be good with magnetizing, he is not very good at parenting. Magneto is usually a pretty strict father who has demanded much from his children over the years. I think Wanda, in terms of having a caring parent, was actually better off with her sentient cow mom that the high 
high evolutionary created. Number four, spell backfire. Even when Wanda tries to do good, she can't catch a break. In the X-Men Empire series tie-in, Scarlet Witch seeks to right her wrongs by bringing back all those mutants lost in the massacre at Genosha. She is trying to atone for her past and all the harm that she has brought to mutant kind. But poor Wanda can't seem to catch a break. Her ritual to revive the dead backfires and instead simply turns those that she's trying to bring back into zombie mutants, instead of bringing them, you know, fully back to life. To make matters worse, we later find out that Doctor Strange warned her against trying to make amends for her sins this way, telling her she couldn't do what had already been done. This made Wanda think that she simply needed to shift her focus instead of realizing that she needed to actually forge new paths as opposed to undoing old tragedies. Number three, Vision's death. Going back to the MCU for a moment, one of the worst things that happened to Elizabeth Olsen's Scarlet Witch was the death of Ultron in Infinity War. Wanda had to kill her synthesoid lover herself after Thanos showed up to attack Wakanda during an attempted procedure to safely remove the Mind Stone from Vision, attempted by Black Panther's brilliant sister, the Princess Shuri. As the procedure was cut short and everyone was pulled into the fray, Thanos was on his way to claim that stone when Viz asked Wanda to destroy it, and by extension, destroy him. She initially refused, but reluctantly agreed when Viz pressed her and insisted that she wouldn't and couldn't hurt him with her powers, and that all he felt when she used them on him was her. No pain, just her. Aw, so cute. Through tears, Scarlet Witch used her powers to destroy the stone, only to watch Thanos show up and use the Time Stone to rewind time, bring Vision back to life, so that he could destroy him by ripping the Mind Stone out of his head very painfully. Yikes! Number two, possessed by Kathon. This is one of those times that Wanda was made a villain, truly, without any of her own intent steering her there. Wanda was actually marked by Kathon at birth to act as the Elder God's vessel, should he find a way to return. Kathon would actually succeed in possessing Wanda and using her to return on more than one occasion, though the first time around was probably the worst. When Mordred summoned Kathon via a ritual, allowing the god to basically take hold of Wanda and leaving the Avengers powerless against his will. Fortunately, the disaster that would be Kathon's return was averted before the ritual could be fully completed. Thank goodness for dolls with parts of Wanda's soul in them. That's because that's how it, that's what happened. Number one, losing her children. If you were to ask Wanda what one of the worst things that ever happened to her was, I'm sure she would likely answer the loss of her children. Although she would get her two twin boys, Billy and Tommy, back when their souls were basically reborn into our world, reincarnating them, she would never really get back the family that she had initially willed into existence. Using her power and from her desire, Wanda made it possible for her and Vision to have children together, and Wanda gave birth to two twin boys. However, when others learned that they weren't real and that their existence was kind of making reality unstable, they forced Scarlet Witch to confront the truth, temporarily destroying or displacing her children. Since they weren't really fully destroyed because they kind of did come back, but just in a really weird comic book way. You might think Wanda has had it bad in life, and of course, as we've discussed, you'd be right. But one of the things that makes Scarlet Witch such a great match for Vision in a weird way is that both have suffered their share of emotional and physical trauma, in some cases even causing trauma to each other. Welcome back, Nerd Squad. We've talked about Wanda Maximoff's more tragic moments both on the screen and in the comics, and now it is time to talk about Visions. And wow, is there a lot to unpack here as we count down the top 10 worst things that happened to Vision. And I thought Wanda had daddy issues. Yikes. Let's get right into it. Number 10, Stan Lee's ire. Initially, Vision wasn't loved by all at Marvel's offices. In fact, Marvel legend Stan Lee hated the look and the name of the character apparently when he was first created in 1968 by John Buscema and Roy Thomas. Apparently, Stan complained to Roy about the choice of color for the android, not liking the look of his bright red appearance, and also felt the name was not a good fit, not strong enough for the character. Today, his appearance has become iconic, and we think nothing of it. But back when he was first created, it wasn't just with comic book characters that his existence was considered controversial. Number 9 death of his first creator. Despite the fact that we often attribute Vision's existence to Ultron, he wasn't the only one involved in his creation process. And no, I'm, I'm not talking about Tony Stark here. 
Professor Phineas Horton was forcefully recruited by Ultron into helping him create the synthesoid we later came to know as the Vision. Vision, in fact, was originally given the memories of Professor Horton's previous android creation, which brought on the rage of Ultron, who had specifically told Horton to wipe those memories. He's like, you do it or you're dead. And Horton was like, we'll see. Ultron, of course, did kill the professor, though, creating probably one of the first tragic moments in Vision's life to come about. At the time, the synthesoid mourned the life of his creator and swore to get revenge on Ultron. And before we move on to this next spot, just a quick reminder, if you are enjoying this video and you want more like it, talking about Wanda or Vision or both of them together, oh, romantic moments, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. It really does help us out on the channel. Number eight, no sense of normalcy. Despite the fact that he might seem cold and seems to embrace his synthetic nature, Vision actually constantly strives to fit in. When Wanda and Vision first got married in the comics, they both sought to find normalcy together by settling down in a suburban neighborhood neighborhood. So nice. Similar to what we've seen the couple attempt in the Marvel Cinematic Universe in the Disney Plus show WandaVision. Yeah, if you like WandaVision and you want to sort of read more things that maybe have inspired it, this is a miniseries you're going to want to read. The two of them, however, it seems were never fated to have a normal life and try as they might, strange events always seemed to disrupt their attempts and lurk around every single corner. For an example of what I'm talking about, you need not look further than the first issue of their miniseries together from the 80s, The Vision and Scarlet Witch. Seriously though, check out this miniseries. On Halloween, a quiet night in quickly turns into something out of a nightmare, ending with a visit from Scarlet Witch's often villainous then-father, Magneto. So it becomes more of a nightmare, I imagine. Number seven, being controlled. The smallest spoilers ahead for WandaVision if you know nothing about it, but mostly this part is pretty safe as we'll just be focusing kind of on the premise of the show and what we know of it so far based on what has been implied in the episodes. So more of like a, if you know the show, you probably know this. In WandaVision, it's implied that Scarlet Witch, Wanda herself, is in complete control of everything going on in Westview, including Vision's appearance and existence there. After all, as we talked about before, Vision's appearance there likely means that Wanda manipulated him and brought him back to life, possibly even reanimating his lifeless corpse. Yikes. As the show unfolds, Vision becomes more suspicious of his life in Westview and Wanda and her involvement not just in it, but in manipulating it as well with her reality altering powers. Also, I never noticed this before, but Westview's name actually seems to be a reference to the initial of the main characters of the show and the show title itself. Westview, WV, WandaVision, WV. Interesting. Also, it's weird that it took me so long to notice that, but I just noticed it today, so. I was looking for all kinds of other explanations as to what Westview meant. I never thought about like the initials. Number six, from the torch to Wonder Man. The first human torch was not actually Johnny Storm, but was an android created by Professor Phineas Horton himself. Ultron, wanting to make his own such creation, kidnapped the professor and forced him to build an android being for Ultron's own purposes, which we talked about a little bit earlier. The professor, of course, modeled the synthesoid after his own creation, but a little too closely for Ultron liking, as I said, bestowing the Human Torch's memories as well to the creation we'd later come to know as Vision. Brought to life, this being attacked Ultron, who had killed the Professor as punishment for his betrayal. Unfortunately, Torch Vision, this version of Vision, was no match for Ultron, and in the end he actually ended up being reprogrammed by Ultron to follow his orders and was given the brain patterns of Wonder Man. Nothing against Wonder Man, by the way, but sharing brain patterns with that hero would cause lots of weirdness for Vision and for Scarlet Witch as well later on down the line. I feel like if you get a pick who you want to share brain patterns with, Wonder Man's not at the top of the list. Also, it's really weird that like Wonder Man's brain patterns were just lying around Hank Pym's lab and like a little recorder device. It's like, why did you have those, Hank Pym? What's going on? Number five, no one to help. This point has some more specific spoilers for the latest episode of WandaVision, episode six. So if you haven't gotten there yet, you maybe want to skip this one if you want to avoid spoilers, or if you haven't seen it, but you're like, I'm living through the spoilers, man, which is fine. 
In the latest episode of WandaVision, it's Halloween in Westview as we proceed along our sitcom timeline into the world of basically kind of a Malcolm in the Middle inspired era, which uh, aired actually in the 2000s, despite this episode having a very 90s feel and despite that series having a 90s feel. Trying to solve the mystery of what's really going on in Westview, Vision lies to Wanda about not being able to join her and the kids trick-or-treating due to being on duty for Neighborhood Watch. Now, in reality, he actually spends the evening investigating Westview and eventually finds the town's reality warping barrier, which he attempts to cross, not knowing that this will likely end up killing him. As outside of this altered reality, which it's hinted at is numbered as 2800 in the MCU, despite the fact that I think that number is already taken in the comics, Vision is in fact dead. When he moves to leave the town, we watch as he struggles against the magical barrier, which obviously very much wants to keep him within town limits. Sword watches as he attempts to move into their world, seeing him fall to pieces, slowly dissolving in front of them. And as a handcuffed Darcy Lewis shouts for them to do something, like to help this man. But that doesn't end up happening. They just run. In the end, it's up to Wanda to save the day when Billy alerts her that he senses that his dad is in danger. Wiccan to the rescue. Number four, manipulated into being a villain. I really do feel for Vision. Most of the most terrible things that have happened to him in the comics or otherwise are honestly my worst nightmare, which is being controlled by other people. In this case, we're talking about when he was sent in to kill the Avengers and seemingly in some kind of murderous trance. Once the team attempted to reason with him, it became apparent that this synthozoid enemy wasn't all he appeared to be, and in fact that he might not truly be acting of his own volition. In the end, Vision would end up becoming an ally to the Avengers, fighting against his instincts to do them harm. They'd actually help him by deprogramming his murderous urges, and he would eventually go on to join the Avengers outright, fighting many times against his creator and father, Ultron. Many times. Many times. Ultron never stays dead. Number three, infected with a Hydra virus. During the events of Secret Empire, Steve Rogers would end up having his whole life history rewritten and be revealed as a longtime sleeper agent for Hydra. Our heroes would, however, find out too late about Rogers' true allegiances true allegiances. And so Captain America would become Captain Hydra, or Hydra Supreme, and would take over the United States of America for the glory of Hydra. But he would also end up recruiting some of Earth's mightiest heroes besides, including Scarlet Witch and Vision. But how did he convince them to join the side of evil? Well, he didn't. For Wanda, Hydra actually awoke Cthon within her in order to take control of her body and make use of her powers. And if you want to learn more about Cthon and that whole thing, you can check out the worst things that happened to Wanda's list where we talk about that a bit more. For Vision, being a synthesoid, they merely infected him with a virus. That was easy. And although Vision tried to fight it, he remained unable to break free and fight against Hydra until near the end of the event. Like the second last issue, I believe, in the main one. Secret Empire number nine. Number two, death. Well, those who only knew Vision from the MCU might think of his tear-jerking demise in Endgame, comic fans know that a fate worse than being destroyed, at least the first time around, awaited him in the comics. Here, instead of Wanda destroying him at his own request, urging her on with words of affirmation and love, Vision ends up being controlled against his will by her, which leads to him ending up in a direct conflict that he doesn't actually want any part of, which ultimately leads to his very gruesome death. Not only does he melt and vomit up silver pods, which transform into Ultron bots, but Overkill comes into play when She-Hulk then decides to go into a rage and ends up tearing him down the middle, which is a pretty epic and permanent kind of on-panel death. Although, of course, even if you get ripped down the middle, that's probably not the end of you, because comics. Vision is still a synthetic being, and he can be recreated. So don't worry, he would be rebuilt, and he would return once more. But what a death to come back from. Number one, weaponized. During the events of Avengers Disassembled, which led right into House of M, Wanda ended up suffering from a mental break, and as such, ended up turning on her fellow Avengers. You'd think Vision, being one of the Avengers who, you know, is married to Wanda, would be safe, but no. Wanda ended up not only getting him killed, but it was the way in which she did it, I think, that just really cut him deep. She didn't just put him in the right places to be torn apart by She-Hulk, but she actually turned him into 
into a weapon to be used against his friends and teammates, the Avengers. Vision actually warned them when he came to them that he was no longer in control of his body before vomiting up those pods, which turned into Ultron robot drones, who then attacked the Avengers after their mansion had already been attacked. This was just a real bad day all around for the whole team. When Vision returned to life and Wanda much later came to ask for forgiveness, it would actually be this memory that would prevent him from being able to forgive his wife, Scarlet Witch. He was like, I can forgive the fact that you had a mental break, but you literally turned me against my friends and made me like hurt them. And some of them died. It's like pretty crazy.